Well, I hope you had a great weekend. It's Monday morning, May the 9th, and uh, we're continuing our walk through the life of the prophet Elijah in our morning check-ins here at Ephraim Church. Now, I introduced you to another guy in the story uh, on Friday. His name was Obadiah. We saw that he had great commitment to God. He feared God. He took him seriously. He had great courage for God because he had hid the prophets of the Lord in caves and fed them when Jezebel was looking to kill them. Now, we saw on Friday that our check-in ended with Obadiah going one way and King Ahab going the other way, trying to find grazing land for the animals because they're in the end of three years of a drought in the land. Now, as Obadiah goes looking for that land, that grass, he meets the prophet Elijah, the one King Ahab has been seeking to kill. Look what it says in chapter 18, verse 7. Now, as Obadiah was on the way, behold, Elijah met him. And he recognized Elijah, and he fell on his face and said, Is this you, Elijah, my master? And Elijah said, It is. Go say to your master, Ahab, behold, Elijah is here. And Obadiah said, What sin have I committed that you're giving your servant into the hand of Ahab to put me to death? Now, why would this bother Obadiah? Well, uh, if Obadiah goes back and says to King Ahab, Guess what? I found Elijah. And they go over. See, here is Obadiah's fear. When they get there, Elijah will have disappeared. He seems to have this routine of doing that. When he, he appeared before the king, announced the drought, then it seemed like he disappeared. And he's afraid he'll do it again. And the king will say, why didn't you kill him when you had the chance? Now I'm going to kill you. So Obadiah is a little freaked out at this. In fact, here's what it says in verse 10. As the Lord your God lives, Elijah said, there's no nation or kingdom, I'm sorry, Obadiah is talking, where my master is not sent to search for you. And when they said he's not here, he made the kingdom or nation swear they could not find you. And now you're saying, go say to your master, behold, Elijah's here. And it'll come about when I leave you that the spirit of the Lord will carry you somewhere I don't know. So obviously you yeah, had the reputation of that happening. So when I come and tell Ahab and he can't find you, he will kill me. So... Obadiah is a little concerned here. And Elijah is going to comfort him, give him assurance. Here's what he says in verse 13. Has it not been told to my master what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord? That I hid a hundred prophets of the Lord by fifties in a cave, provided them with bread and water. Now you're saying, go say to your master, Elijah's here, he'll kill me. So Obadiah now goes, don't you realize what I've done? I'm not worthy of death. Listen, I've even been protecting prophets of God. Well, look at the conclusion, verse 15. Elijah says, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to Ahab today. Now, why is Elijah so courageous to show himself to a man who's been searching all over to kill him? Because remember, God said, go show yourself to Ahab. You know what Elijah's doing? He's obeying God even when it's difficult. He's obeying God even when it's dangerous. See, this is the key. If you really want to see God bless your life, you must obey him, not just when it's easy, but also when it's difficult. Not just when it's safe, but also when it's dangerous. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And now we have it. It's kind of the Super Bowl of the Bible. It's going to be the greatest contest ever. And you don't want to miss a moment of it. So keep watching our morning check-ins. Let me pray. So Father, help us today to be committed to obey you, even when it's difficult. To obey you, even when it's dangerous. Because you are faithful. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see what happens tomorrow when Ahab and Elijah come face to face. Have a good day.